good afternoon, Justice Shipper Lewis. I'd like to report a missing person. My father, there's no sign of him at all. Every two minutes, someone in Britain is reported missing. I just thought that he was going to turn up, but he didn't. And then it turned into a very threatening situation. I can't understand how she just disappears. We don't delay. That delay could be the difference between life and death. The key to each investigation is to trace the missing person's last known movements. We have every available mobile to the area where she's gone missing. And to work out why they've disappeared. It's a broad spectrum for what people go missing. You can use statistics to help you, you can use experience to help you, but you can't second guess human nature. We've got concerns for a female with dementia. Do you Check believe that he is suicidal? Yes, yeah, yeah right. he is suicidal and he will do it. Following the work of police in Gloucestershire across urban and remote rural landscapes. He could be absolutely anywhere. Multiple cameras capture everyone's perspective, minute by minute, as the cases unfold. Please, just everyone keep looking out for him. We just want him home safely. I don't think they realise how little time we have left on scene. For loved ones left at home, everything hangs in the balance. She's so vulnerable. Now it's getting worrying. She's always been over my life. Will it be that they found him alive? Or is it going to be a phone call saying, I'm going to have to identify his body? Romeo Tango 265. Could you pick up in some 110? He's a mister by the name of Aaron. We have a size 2300. Police have been alerted that a 37 year old homeless man called Aaron has gone missing. Officers are dispatched to start searching for him out on the streets of Gloucester. Is there anybody there? Hello? Hello? Police? Fire track down some numbers. At the force response unit, lost person search manager Rob Wilkes starts making inquiries. I see. Aaron's showing up as homeless, so he's no fixed abode. It was a support worker that had rung in and said, we haven't seen him. There's a place in Gloucester. It's run by the NHS, and they were concerned because he has not been attending there for a couple of months. He was a known um, Class A drug user. The immediate family, normally the ones that report them missing, normally they've been missing for a few hours or something like that. So the fact that Aaron's been missing for a couple of months is unusual. Hello, please. It's only belongings, actually. Clean clothes. No phones, nothing. Officers focus on places where rough sleepers are known to stay for any sign of Aaron or someone who may have seen him recently. Oh, what's that in there? Drug paraphernalia. Class A drug users are vulnerable people. They are liable to be attacked because they get into debt. They may take drugs and become unconscious out on the street at night and suffer from hypothermia quite quickly. They could wipe themselves out with one hit from a heroin that's come from a bad batch. Hello, it's the police officer. Hello. Hello. Hiya. No, no, nothing, nothing to worry about. There's a tent over here. Yeah, okay. Right. Have you seen anybody coming and going? Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's one guy. Okay, it's can you guy. describe him to no, me? I can't describe him, no. Okay, thanks for your help. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. bye we will keep looking, but there's nothing of his here. It's quite a sad way of life when nobody actually notices that you're not there anymore. For individuals that are disconnected from families or who don't have a social routine, they're quite isolated already. It makes it less obvious for people to notice when they're not there. It's quite common for people to fall under the radar. Romeo Tango 2159. Have you already got a uh, mobile going to that address? We've got one going. Thank you. With overnight searches finding no sign of Aaron, he remains a missing priority. 
PC John Carberry is dispatched to the homeless medical centre that reported him missing. How long has he not been seen here? I'd right, say for a couple of months. OK. Staff contacted police after realising that Aaron was not collecting vital medication. The issue is, his medication, it looks like he's not been taken for no, a while. He hasn't touched it. He hasn't, been, he hasn't picked up a prescription for ages. OK. And would that be usual behaviour, to be here for a while, disappear, come back, or do you not know him that well? Well, we used to know him really well. He had a flat mm. just over the road there, uh, just down there. Yeah. That was a long time was... ago. And then he suddenly appeared back here, homeless, and he'd be in every week near enough. Right. I don't know him, but was he was he quite capable of looking after himself? Or? I would yeah, think he's so. He's very yes. resourceful. Is he? Very okay. resourceful. So he's been on the streets a while. He yes, knows the streets. Yeah, he knows, yeah. If he does turn up, mm -hmm. you know, give us a call of because course. we are concerned about him. The fact that he's not well it's and he's not taking his medication. Sure. Thanks ever so much for your help. Don't worry. Hello. His health will be deteriorating. There's no question about that if he hasn't been taking his medication, despite the fact that he's probably buying some sort of supplementary medication on the street. Um, he's probably not getting the right stuff or the right amount. So the longer this goes on, the more concerns we must have for Aaron. Sister is Gail. PC Wilkes has been searching police records to find any next of kin. He's discovered that Aaron used to live with his sister, Gail. Hi. I was just I was wonder if you can help me. We're looking for Aaron. Oh, my God. No one's in trouble. We just want to make sure he's safe and well, because he's missed his medication for a long time. The actual last time you saw him, when was that, Gail? It was probably three months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Looking really, really bad with some drinks. Yeah, so that's why I gave him his back on the heroin. In Gloucester? Mm -hmm. In Gloucester, yeah. Obviously, if you get anything, let me know, and I'll give you a ring back later on. Gail hasn't seen Aaron since she asked him to leave several months ago. I feel guilty because he had nowhere to go. So it's like as if I've intentionally made him homeless. But he was off his face on staff. My kids were my immediate thought. There was no choice, really. At the end of the day, he's before, before he was on that staff, he was a lovely kid. There's been nothing. And the fact that he hasn't been to the homeless centre for like food and stuff, it's not Aaron. He needs to be fined ASAP, you know, with, with his medication. It is like Russian roulette because it will kill him if he doesn't take it. He is crying out for help. He is crying out for help, but he won't ask for it. He's doing it in a different way. I just want to know that he's all right. Go ahead. As night falls, officers continue to target the city's homeless shelters and rough sleepers for any sightings of Aaron. It's the last time I dropped a homeless person off just down there. Do you have a scoot down there? Do you know this chap? He's been reported missing. No. No. Any idea where he might be hanging around on the streets tonight? If you do see him, give us a ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi guys, you all right? Sorry to interrupt your chinwag. We're oh, looking right. for, for a guy who's gone missing. If I show you a picture, do you recognise him? In Gloucester, we've got quite a lot of homeless people. To a certain extent, they've set up their own little culture and society. They look after one another, they uh, collect tents and everything and help each other out with sleeping bags, etc. Yeah. It's not small weight, it's not... It's, yeah, look as bad exactly. as that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. By speaking to people in this type of community, Nearly all of them will know Aaron, and they will know information that would uh, help us to find Aaron. He's not wanted. He's no, not in trouble. Joking. He's missing. Oh, we were here asking him for weeks. If you do see him, can you get someone to give us a shout? I think that's going to be about it for this one. But despite Aaron being well known on the streets, no one has any information about where he may be. While Gloucestershire is a largely rural county, there are higher levels of social deprivation in the urban centres of Cheltenham and Gloucester, where most rough sleepers are concentrated. How's you all right? You OK? Can you hear me Most of it. Most of it. 
Drug and alcohol addiction are common amongst this group. You're well wrapped up. Is there anything we can do to help you? You're not in trouble, all right? Gloucester has the highest number of addicts. People fall through the cracks and become homeless. I would suggest that everybody currently sleeping rough will have some sort of addiction, um, whether that's drug or alcohol. And that's where the self-neglect comes in because it's money for food or money for drugs. Then their physical well-being will deteriorate, so they'll have longer-term health issues, which may mean that they're in and out of hospital. It's one of the highest risk groups for us. Gloucestershire Police, how can I help? I'm ringing about my son. He's been in hospital yeah. uh, for the last eight weeks, and we're very concerned about him because apparently we did charge himself yesterday to use drugs. We don't know where he is now. What drugs does he take? A heavy stuff to talk. Heavy, yeah. okay, right, like yeah. Heroin. Heroin, yeah, okay. He's at the heavy end, uh, yeah. and basically we believe he's very vulnerable. Another case concerning a drug user has been added to the force's missing priority list. James has discharged himself from hospital against medical advice. He has access to £230 every couple of weeks. That went into his bank at midnight last night. Lost person search managers Steve Wilkinson and Stuart Cook are assessing the level of risk James could be facing with PC Neil Parsons. I think the biggest fear is He's not taking medication that he's supposed to be taking. What is going to be the effect if he doesn't take them? Do you know Well, that there's, there's some indication that if he doesn't take his medication, there'll be quite a serious impact on him. We're just going to review those cameras now. In the control room, CCTV operators immediately start looking back through footage from yesterday when James left the hospital in Gloucester. A recent illness has left him unable to walk and in a wheelchair. I thought it'd be one of the more straightforward cases because we've got a very distinctive individual that we're looking for. It's a male in a wheelchair with limited mobility. He's not in the best of health. I thought this is just a matter of time. He is going to be seen. Hi, it's PC Stu Cook here from Gloucester Police. Meanwhile, PC Cook calls Gloucestershire Royal Hospital to find out more about the state of James's health. How would drug use um, affect his medical condition? His medical state is um, a, t a bit of a ticking time bomb. OK. Thank you for your time. He could appear to be fine for a period of time. Yeah. He needs to be looked at by a specialist. He self-discharged, he did make that decision, but was he thinking clearly about his own health at the point he did self-discharge, or was he thinking, where do I find my next drug score? If you're putting Class A drugs into a system which is already struggling, that's obviously going to make the risk a lot higher. But also, we were informed by staff at the hospital there's a strong chance he could die. He's basically, he's on that cell that's up on the... The old Gloucester Road. James is currently of no fixed address, but he does have a phone. The potential threat to his life means PC Wilkinson has been authorised to get it traced. Run that from noon until 3.30. Right, OK. You've got the last update at 15.28 hours. He's in between those two main roads. Data shows recent activity on James's phone, but it's not in Gloucester. The phone was active eight miles away in Cheltenham just an hour ago. 2310, if we can locate some PCSOs in the Cheltenham area, our MISPA's mobile phone was active at 1329 on Essesway Road. If he is on the move, he's going to be quite easy to spot. It's hanging off this mast more than this mast, so you're looking in this area around here. OK. We're looking for a missing man. I haven't seen anybody. He'd be quite identifiable. you probably notice him. Um, should he come in, could you ring 999? Nothing, nothing springs to mind? No. OK. Could you add to the log that I have done all the shops that are open? Nobody has seen uh, anybody of that description. Wilco, it's Sam. I'm done here. London Road, there's no trace of the site. A search of the areas where James's phone was active has found no sign of him. His phone's off now, so there's no point in requesting any more phone work. 
and the most recent data shows that the phone is now off. I don't really know what other lines of inquiry that are easily open to us. It is quite strange that he is moving around, yet we're not seeing him. It's a concern that someone has taken his phone off him. You can never rule that out. You've got to consider, is he being taken advantage of because of his vulnerabilities? He's got access to cash, and it, could that cash be taken off him? Yeah, that's all I see. I'll go over for the bare CCTV. Following the phone trace, the CCTV team have switched the focus of their search from Gloucester to Cheltenham. Steve, go ahead. Got him on CCTV. Cheers, thank you. Ooh. CCTV footage reveals James in Cheltenham Town Centre yesterday afternoon, shortly after he left hospital. He's being pushed in his wheelchair by a man, then soon afterwards by a woman. Watching this CCTV, who are the people that he's with? So you're looking at anyone who interacts with the missing person and trying to work out their motives. Does that person know him? Are they a risk to him or are they trying to help him? Has he taken any drugs? He's at enormous risk. Police now know that James somehow traveled the eight miles from Gloucester to Cheltenham Town Centre yesterday afternoon. The phone trace shows that he was still in Cheltenham today, but they're no closer to finding out who he's with or where they have taken him. On scene, 23-10-19. In Gloucester, PC Rob Wilkes has found information which may explain why no one has seen missing drug user Aaron. Background checks reveal a warrant was recently issued for Aaron's arrest after he failed to appear in court for offences relating to theft. You could be cynical and say, oh, he's just wanted and he doesn't want to be found. Or well, we're very keen, obviously, to catch criminals to prevent them from c committing more crime. However, because he is vulnerable and of no fixed abode, we need to still treat him as a missing person. So when Aaron's found and once his welfare has been looked after, um, we would invoke the warrant and um, he would be arrested. But at this time, we're nowhere near there. We're still trying to find him. Got a possible address on Unifier's uh, Robin Hood Street. While in custody, Aaron gave police an old address where he has stayed in the past. PC Wilkes heads to Robin Hood Street to make inquiries. Hi, oh, wait to come in? Yeah. Oh, we're looking for someone, is that all right? It's just someone's missing, all right? I was just I would wonder if you can help me. Yeah, sorry, um, who are you looking for, darling? Aaron is missing, so we just want to make sure oh, that he's safe. Sake, well, I hope he's Have you seen him? Have you seen him recently? No. No one. No. Is anybody else here at all? No. Just no. the three of you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> no worries. When I entered the house, I could see straight away the house was in disarray. The people there obviously have had their own problems in relation to drugs and alcohol. Some of these people are not very pro-police. They may well know that he was wanted on warrant, so they might give us a few false leads just to get us out of the place. Um, it's difficult to ascertain, you know, what sort of information you're getting. But I got the feeling that they were quite concerned as well. Don't oh, put the light on. Is this light on? No, no. no. OK. No, no. You don't know his girlfriend or anything? No, no. Don't no. even think he's got a girlfriend. And where did you see him last, last time? What, in, in Gloucester City Centre? Just in passing. Uh, yeah, literally just passing. We were just literally passing it. And when was the last time you saw him? Oh, I don't know. Did you get any contact from him or anything at all? We will get Can you ring 101? Away. Ring 101, yes. incident 110 of today. At 10. Like that incident 110. Yeah. No worries, thank you. See you later, bye.
And in Gloucester, we've got people who have been homeless with drug problems. It's a transient lifestyle, but whilst they might not see each other on a daily basis, they might move from one place to another and then see that person again. Quite often their friends are drug users themselves, so they all tend to stick together, which gives us a bit of a problem trying to break up that cycle. But we are worried about whereabouts he is and we don't have an awful lot to go on at this stage. call into Newton House. At false response, PC Jason Parker is now leading the search for missing hospital patient James, who is at risk of serious complications if he uses drugs. See if they know any addresses for them then. Police have used CCTV images to put out a public appeal in the hope of finding out who he may be with. People are prone and vulnerable, and that's what you've got to be aware of. He's got no sort of fixed address, so he's not currently living anywhere. We don't know whether he's been sleeping rough. We know from Intel that he's got access to money, but also he's been taken advantage of in the past. Whether he's been coerced into maybe get some drugs, we don't know what that effect that's going to have on him. And if he deteriorates quite quickly, then we could have dire consequences. Just show them those pictures to see All if right. they know. OK, cheers. Thank you. Anyway. The CCTV showed James being taken through Cheltenham Town Centre and out of the camera's range. Before his phone was switched off yesterday, it was traced to the less affluent areas of Hester's Way and Springbank. PC Parker decides to focus the search on this area. I need to look at your CCTV. Is there someone available that could let me in to let me do it? Officers are asked to check whether any of the shops have CCTV of their own. Towns and cities, you've got CCTV everywhere now. I'm just finding that last known location and just working from there. So that can take a long time as we go rely on ECSOs to try and sort of do some of the footwork for us. Papa Arthur 998. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I'm currently in the resource centre in Springbank Way in uh, Hester's Way. Officers checking for CCTV in a nearby community centre have got a lead. My missing person was here. Staff recall seeing a man yesterday fitting James's description. That's an addition, isn't it? I'll look through that one The CCTV reveals James at the centre yesterday, just before his phone was turned off, this time accompanied by a male. We won't do anything else. Possibly direction of travel, which way he was going? It's just coming out of the shop. Right, OK, so he's going... He's going left. Left, left the area, went to more Springbank Road direction, yeah. then, didn't he? OK. Hey, when you're performing, so you're the one who works for the exchange? OK. So if that's any interest to Getting the CCTV is a big breakthrough because we know he's alive. But we don't know whether he's been taken there unwillingly or willingly. We can see he is with someone. Is he just a friend trying to look after him? Or is he pretending to look after him for money? People that are drug users can get exploited, especially from the dangerous drug networks which come from out of county. They pretend to be their friends and they look after their cash and they sort of take over their life. Sometimes the people don't see it for a while until it's too late. It's quite crucial to try and identify that person as soon as we can. Rich, can you just do an update on where we are with all the misplaces? We might as well start with, start with Aaron. In Gloucester, it's been 48 hours since homeless man Aaron was reported missing. But police have yet to find any trace of him. Sergeant Rich Knapp is reviewing their search strategy. 
not been seen since the end of October. He's homeless uh, at the moment. There was a sighting of him on the 2nd. Although Aaron is still wanted for arrest, police are more concerned that he is not getting the medical treatment he needs. And we are treating him as a missing person first and foremost. We want to find and make sure that he's not had a medical episode. Hello. Hi, it's Rich and Upper Ban Furlong. Hello. We have a missing person. We're just wondering whether you might be able to assist with a press release and some social media. Yes, of course. Police can't rule out that Aaron has left the Gloucester area, so they're widening the net with a public appeal. There's always the hope that a press release will ultimately get to that person and might prompt them to, to come to the police or to contact friends or family. With a drug addict, quite often there will be some shame and embarrassment around their addiction, so they will close themselves off. There is likely to be judgment from the public when they see us dealing with people like drug addicts. I think some of that is natural. Just because someone is an addict and has chosen that doesn't mean we don't owe them duty of care. From here. Sergeant Knapp sends officers back to the homeless health care centre to find out whether Aaron could be getting his medication elsewhere. If someone's missing for a certain amount of time, then we can make inquiries via the NHS. We can also put markers on someone's NHS record that if they do present at another hospital within the UK, then we're notified. Hello, Aaron. Yeah, I've seen him for a while. Haven't you? He no. still hasn't been in. No. He's probably on a bit of a downward spiral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if he's not coming here, where, where, is, he? where is he? And how is he getting stuff? Someone said to me they thought he might be in Cheltenham. Someone said they thought he might be in Bristol. So that's just the rumours. What of the guys that come yeah. here? OK, great. Thank you. I, I don't know whether he still is in Gloucester. I'm sure he'd be using their services if he was. A few people that obviously go into George Whitfield, some have said he's in Cheltenham. Yeah, right. OK. It's got 340 odd shares. It's nice people are like, you know, sharing it and stuff like that. While word is starting to spread that Aaron is missing, Gail is still waiting for any news. People that actually know Aaron are genuinely worried for him. I am getting messages. Is he okay? Have you heard anything? But obviously you get the other ones that, you know, will say, well, he's on heroin, he's a junkie. We chose to do it, so pff, good luck to him. He knows what it does to him. It's a bit. Stop judging. Stop judging until you know the story. Like, shut up, you know. He's bottled a lot of stuff up throughout the years. Stuff that he should have spoke about. He was like Mama's little boy, so he was always, you know, even if he was a white little shit. Oh, we Aaron can't do nothing wrong. Do you know what I mean? So he's he's always been like mothered. And then obviously when she when she passed, he, he did seem to, he took it really quite bad. He did take it bad. He did. And it was really stupid to be fair, because he had a good job and all. He did work up at the race course. You know, he was sorting himself right out again. He really was. But, I don't know, addiction, isn't it? He doesn't think anybody cares about him. And we do care. Loads of people care about him. He needs to realise that it's people that actually love him that he is destroying as well. Got my body's turning up and it's like, God say, I just don't want the, the doorbell goes or something. It's like, is that the police? I'm just waiting for it, you know? I'm just waiting for that call. With the public appeal yet to generate any sightings, Sergeant Knapp is starting to consider other explanations for Aaron's disappearance. There is the possibility that he's either not able to get help or that he wasn't comfortable to get help. At this point, I'm thinking, has something happened to Aaron? Has he taken an overdose or has he self-harmed? My concerns are growing. Go ahead. Yeah, a gentleman approached us stating that him and his nephew were at Shab Hill, believe there's a dead body up there. 
Police have been called to a rural area 10 miles east of Gloucester. He's saying whether it could have been a mannequin, but we're going to take him up now and, and see whether that's the case. One, there is a body here. Okay. We're going to have to see how to the crime scene. Can we get hold of an FRU sergeant? Can you put a scene guard on? Detective Tracy Ann Curtis has been called to attend the scene. We've come across uh, what we believe to be an adult male. Sadly, he's in a decomposed state. His head is in this area here, just almost over the, this, what would appear to be this wall, and um, his feet are there, but he's almost in this sort of uh, cradle clutched position that suggests that he is using the wall to protect him from the elements. Yeah, yeah. The sleeping bag does have vegetation debris on, which would be indicative that he's been there for a while. How long is yet to be determined. How he died, why he died, and who is he? is yet to be determined also. He doesn't appear to have any possessions with him. He could have been a homeless individual who's taken himself away from society and may have just been exposed to the elements and died as a result. Police won't be able to move the body until daylight, so the man cannot be identified tonight. We're going to place the scene guard on overnight. The lights from your truck should be sufficient. In the morning, we'll look to recover this body. We'll be looking for any clues of who he is. Since 2017, the number of deaths among homeless people in the UK has increased by 22%. In Gloucestershire, there's large pockets of homeless people who are openly sleeping rough. There are occasions where they have been found deceased. That is the worst outcome. Members of the public will come across somebody who is deceased, and then it's just trying to identify that person against live missing records. The hardest ones are when that person hasn't even been reported missing in the first place.
It's quite a delicate, fragile body, so we want to take that extra care and attention. The next morning, crime scene coordinator Martin Cuff returns to the body find with a forensics team. I think the priorities on this one is obviously we've got to, to recover these remains. Um, we'll do it quite carefully, but also I think we need to check that body over and see if there's any identification in there, anything we could use to inform us who this person may be. Shall we head in? Yeah, I think so. One, two, three. As the body is decomposed, police are searching for any personal items that will help them determine whether it's a known homeless male. It's quite enclosed, but you can kind of see why somebody would shelter here. So we've got a uh, rucksack, just so you know. Ah, oh, brilliant. And if we can do the examination of that. Right. well looked after, isn't it? Handwritten music. So what language is it? German? Uh, body lotion. Yeah. Um, obviously quite prepared then. This. Tough to do. Just want to open that purse up and check to see mm -hmm. whether there's anything identification-wise inside it. Uh, got a um, bank card. And yeah, there we go. Hi, it's uh, Martin from Soccer. You got a pen and paper? We've got a, some identification that's been found in a purse in the rucksack. So, appears to be a German identity card. First name of Ruth, as in Romeo Uniform Tango Hotel. Yeah, it's a female. Yeah, John knows her. Oh, uh, uh, John Carberry's here and thinks he actually knows the uh, the lady. He might have dealt with her previously, so she may be maybe on our local systems. PC Carberry recognises Ruth's name as that of a homeless woman he assisted five months ago. So how did you come across her? She'd been stood at a bus stop for 12 hours. I remember the public noticed her a few times. So we got to her, spoke to her. She was a very nice lady. She was clearly in a place where she was a bit lost. So we tried to help her off the streets. We put her in a place where she wanted to be. And following that, she disappeared. I wonder how she's got all the way up here. I wonder if she's got lost and just like hunkered down. I check the pockets on the body, make yep. sure there's nothing else we're missing. Yep. And then just get the body packaged up and ready for the undertakers to collect, I think. Police issue an appeal for information from anyone who may have known Ruth. Good afternoon, Gloucester Police. Hello, I have information about incident 373. Ruth, we knew her. OK. So if that is the same person, she was at church. OK, I will forward that information on to the relevant people. It's a really sad story. She's a German national. She'd lost her home in unknown circumstances, and she's felt the need to travel across to Gloucestershire to find friends from 25 years ago. She was seen by members of the public. She appeared to have slept in the bus stop. But she was described as vulnerable, confused, which would suggest elements of mental health. It's difficult to know. It seems that there was a little bit of routine. She would go to church. But these weren't people who were necessarily close friends. It's only afterwards people have come forward and said they haven't seen her for a little while, which has been really difficult because she was never reported missing. She was clearly sleeping rough in quite an exposed area at a very cold period of the year. If only somebody took the time to say, then we could have put her on as a missing person. And there was so much more that could potentially have been done. As Ruth is a foreign national, her details are handed over to the German authorities so they can trace any next of kin. When people are calling in, 
because they have concerns for an individual. There's a real emphasis on making sure they're recorded as missing so that we can satisfy ourselves that that person is safe and well. It doesn't matter whether they're sleeping rough or whether they've got a drug or alcohol condition. If there is a significant risk of harm to them, then reporting them as a missing person is the right thing to do. What's his name? Aaron. Um, and he's just made contact with me on Facebook. OK, and what to say? Uh, I'm not in a good place. I'm very ill. Yeah. I'm getting worse by the day. But you don't worry about me. I've told you I've had enough. I just want to put myself out of my misery. Um, I, uh, um, I love all you girls so much. Right, OK, I've updated the incident. I'll get hold of someone for you. A week after being reported missing, Aaron has made contact with his sister. It's the first sign in two months that he's alive. I messaged him four times and he read the message, but after that, there was I've sent more and he's not responded, so... He's had enough. He has had enough. He wants help. He does want help by, the, by what he's done. It doesn't sound like my brother at all. To me, that's just a, a little boy crying out. That's like a lost soul. He, you know, he, he, don't, he doesn't know what else to do. I don't think he's ever got over the, the death of our mum, you know, and, like, like, today is her birthday, you know, so... And, obviously, him getting in contact with me today is, like, you know... Hope he don't do anything stupid, you know? I really don't. Golf 2134. Can I just make you aware our missing person, Aaron, has uh, sent text to his sister making threats of suicide? Yes, yes, it's been a medium uh, escalation to a high. So, what's that message? So it basically says, I want to put myself out of my misery. Eight, Was he, is he known to question Steve? No. This girl, that's the sister, isn't it? At false response, PC John Davis is now heading up the search for Aaron. Although he's still wanted for arrest, police have reassessed the level of risk on his missing case. People can be missing with a medium risk for weeks. If some information comes in to say that actually this person might be more vulnerable than we first thought, or someone says they're going to end their, their life straight away, we'll put them at the high risk. If someone is a danger to themselves, we have to find them. Really, it's getting financial it's stuff now, really. Police can now run financial checks on Aaron's bank account to find out whether he's withdrawing money from benefits. Your stuff. Take it easy, yes? Tell them. We know that Aaron has got a bank card, which is universal credit, is paid into that account. It's the only access to money that he has. If we loop round and go through like the bus stops, police are always looking around in the town centre. Officers are also dispatched to search public places in Gloucester, where Aaron could have used the internet to message his sister. If he's got access to a mobile phone but wouldn't have any credit, to contact his sister, he would need to access areas with free Wi-Fi to send that message. So he's this here on the left. We have a 9219 on the library in Gloucester. They don't recognise Aaron, and he's got an expired account, so wouldn't be able to use their computer system anyway. Without being able to find out where Aaron sent his message from, police still have little to go on. It does make it an urgent search because you are trying to save someone's life. It can feel like you are trying to help someone that doesn't want to be helped, that you are throwing every resource at finding them. It does make it very frustrating at times. But the ball is rolling now and the search for him isn't going to stop 
until we do find it. Flosser, please, never help. Hi, I think the incident number is 58. Missing person from Gloucester. Yes, it is. In the control room, a call has come in about missing hospital patient James, who was last seen in the company of an unknown male. I actually worked in the post office. Yeah. He came in yesterday. We've never seen him in the post office ever before, oh. but he was struggling to put his PIN code in. What it time was this? Must have been afternoon. OK. That helps. I'll pass it on to the officer that's in charge. All right, thank you. Just from regards to the high-risk missile from yesterday, PC Lee Whittle is dispatched to the post office to follow up on the sighting. We will do that at the time. Yeah. He obviously couldn't move his wheelchair himself. Okay. Have you seen him before in here or not? Trapped in the wheelchair? No. OK. If you see them again, would you just ring 999? Not dangerous or anything, we just need to know that he's OK and safe. Yeah. Go ahead. We've been to the post office. They've not been back in today, but yesterday the lady at the post office counter um, said that he was wheeled to the counter with uh, the gentleman in the red. He took out around £200 in cash and then has been wheeled out again so far. So £200 in cash, yeah. Um, she did say that in terms of his mobility, she doesn't really think that he could move by himself. Oh, hi, it's PC Jason Park from Gloucester Police. With confirmation that James was still with the man in the red hoodie, police have used the community centre CCTV to update their online appeal. Are you right to speak at the minute? PC Parker has been passed the details of a caller who thinks they recognise him. It's just basically I'm one that's trying to find James. If you log back on, hopefully they've updated some images on there. OK, all right, excellent, thank you for that. Bye. Right. The caller can't name the man, but has told PC Parker that he attends a local addiction support centre. The chap in red, he goes to CGL in Cheltenham, so it might be worth showing them the image. All right, cheers, bye-bye. So in terms of the chap he was with yesterday, um, we've managed to get a name. So that was from the Drug Rehabilitation Centre, said he was an ex-service user there, so that might be give us a lead on where he might be. Now that he has the man's name, PC Parker can run a check for him on police records. Yeah, that's, def that's definitely it. Yeah, same shape yeah, nose, isn't it? Nose. Nose. That one, yeah. It's definitely mm. it. They didn't give an address or anything for him? No, them. they didn't give an address. They haven't seen him for a, a fair while. They have got the details, should, should they turn up and give us a ring? They may not have been in trouble for a while. No. Anyway. No one, the other person was a drug user. It is concerning because you don't know whether they're both recovering and they're helping each other out or whether he's using and he's going to get some money from James and then sort of draw him back into that world in which he may be trying to get away from. Hello, police emergency. Hello, there's a man in a wheelchair missing in Cheltenham. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's here now, outside our premises. Yeah, whereabouts are you ringing from? Springbank Community Resource Centre. Whereabouts is he? He's just, he's at the front. Well, he's he's literally the front under the shelter because it's pouring down the rain. Same clothes as yesterday, and Same he's got clothes. the guy, the young boy with the red hoodie on. And that's a guy from the picture, yeah? That's brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. Good eye. Thank you very much. Go ahead. The man in red has taken James back to the community centre where they were spotted yesterday. PCs Parker and Whittle head out to intercept them. He is at Springbank Pharmacy now. Here he comes, pushing out here by the looks of it. He doesn't look well, does he? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. It's horrible weather. Do you want to go inside? 
You're right, James. You obviously reported missing because you left the hospital. You're not coming to any harm or anything? No. You're not under any duress or anything from, from him? No, 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 no. 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 He said he was fine, there was, there was nothing wrong, but he got a kind of having a back in mind whether he's sort of capable of making the decisions himself or whether he needs to be sort of removed away from the person he's with just to make sure he does want to be with that person. The man in the red hoodie has slipped away, but PC Parker's focus now is on encouraging James to return to hospital. You realise what their concerns are, yeah. haven't you? Well, but it's quite serious, isn't it? So. I've gone too much for Yeah. Just no. needs to get out. Yeah. I mean, where have you been staying? Uh, one time. Is it? Yeah. yeah, so it's probably best you, you do go back. Yeah, okay. Are you going to intend to stay in hospital to get like the full treatment or? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas we'd like to get him back to the hospital to see, be seen by professionals that can help him. Yeah, we're not in a position to force anyone unless we deem that they've not got enough capacity to make that decision, then obviously we'd end up ringing an ambulance. If he's saying he's fine, we can't force him to get medical treatment, unfortunately. Get in touch with your, your mum and dad, maybe, because I think they're a bit worried about you. You've got enough money for food and stuff in case yeah. you want, yeah. You've got someone to get you back over to hospital. We get a taxi or something, yeah? All right, make sure you go back, all right? Yeah. All right, um, well, yeah, just look after yourself. Make sure you get yourself checked out. All right, all right. Okay, nice to meet no you. All right, try and stay out of the rain. <laughs> we can all make our own decisions, and that uh, you may not think it's the right one. You know, taking heroin's a bad choice, but someone may think, well, actually, it makes me forget what I don't want to keep remembering all the time. So that's the reasons why they do it. A lot of the time, we just get a snapshot of people's lives. I don't know what his future holds, but. For anyone in, like James or anyone in his position, you just hopefully they'll they'll stop using drugs and sort of maybe have a make a better life for themselves. Right, Aaron is withdrawn money. At false response, PC Davis has just received financial data showing that Aaron's bank card has been used recently at a cash point in Gloucester. His last known address, Robin Hood Street, is within 40 seconds walk of the Lloyds ATM. It's near to the home of Aaron's associates, who told the police officer who visited that they hadn't seen him for weeks. He's definitely used the internet. At the same time, they have using the Lloyds cash point right next to um, Robin Hood Street. So I think there's a real strong chance that he's been there in the last three hours. OK, um, I'll see what kind of response I get. The officers sent to check at the house have returned to force response. So we knock on the door, and then that lady looks through the peephole, then runs out towards the back. There's then that pause, and it's quite a long pause, and then that lady comes to the door. She was a little bit more interested in why we wanted to find him than you'd normally expect. Is he wanted or is he missing? She sort of kept persisting on that one, as if she sort of trying to get information out of us. OK. OK, so, so at the beginning, then. The behaviour of Aaron's contacts has aroused suspicion. PC Davis and Sergeant Sue Oliver review the officer's body-worn camera footage from their visit to the house. But her body language, what do you think? Well, someone's been there, isn't they? It's not meant to be. That view, it's, we can't confirm that that is or isn't him, can we? They're uncertain whether a shape in the background may be someone hiding. Whether that's Aaron. There's absolutely no way that we can say who that is or, or anything from that. 
they know what Aaron's wanted on a Warren. At that point, they start to become a little bit more closed. So we're starting to question whether his associates, they're helping their friend because the police are looking for him. But because he's told his sister that he wants to end his life. Aaron still needs to be a high risk missing person. Police emergency. Oh yeah, it's about a missing person called Aaron. Hours after the police visit to Robin Hood Street, a new call comes in. A friend just phoned me and said that they are actually with him. Okay. So, can't, yeah, he's been living, so he's safe. So can you inform the PCSOs that, yes, he's fine? Right. Yeah, if right. he's been reported missing, they'll need to see him. Do you know where he well, lives? No, but he's fine, he's safe, OK? All right, I'll, yeah, I'll get a message to him now. He's been seen today. What time did he see him? He said a few hours ago. The anonymous call has confirmed PC Davis' suspicions. He updates his inspector on why he no longer considers Aaron a suicide risk. Robin Hood Street, they've said that, are you really worried about him or is it because you, are you looking for him because he's going to get locked up for the warrant? It's because they know he's wanted a warrant, they're not telling us where he is. We've done the financial check, he's withdrawn money within 40 seconds walk of Robin Hood Street. Everything's pointing towards Robin Hood Street, everything. Officers return to the house on Robin Hood Street. Now that they're invoking the arrest warrant, they have the right to search. Aaron is discovered hiding in the bathroom. Once we've checked their welfare and made sure they're safe and well, we deal with the offence. It's not the best outcome for Aaron, but it's a successful search. It is frustrating when you think that someone has put themselves in the situation where the thousands of pounds have been thrown at finding that person when they're missing for their own poor decisions. But I think addiction must be one of the worst places imaginable with nothing left to lose. I imagine nobody wakes up one day and thinks I'm going to become a drug addict now. You wouldn't be human if you didn't feel sympathy for him. Class A drug users, sometimes it's easy to think that maybe this is the end of the line for them. It's very easy to see why people do give up on them, but we should still keep trying to get these people back into society. It takes a lot of resources, but we should never give up. Details of organisations in the UK which offer advice and support go online to the BBC Action Line website.